Hey everyone and welcome back to the Hybrid Fans. And uh, again with me is Yaromir and we want to introduce you to uh, a few things. So we're not doing HCI today, I think, or Apex or anything like that. We wanted to talk about Windows Server 2025, Yaromir. So for people who still don't know you, can you give us a brief intro about yourself? And then I will just switch over to things Eldon Christensen and Jeff Woolsey said during the last event where they introduced uh, Windows Server 2025. So, Hello, yeah. so my name is Jaromir. I'm now working with for Dell. I'm engineering technologist and I'm working with Azure Stack HCI. So I work with product management uh, from Dell and from Microsoft. I provide feedback to Microsoft and Dell based on customers' uh, feedback because I work closely to the, with the customers, uh, usually with the largest customers around the world. And, and before that, I was working for Microsoft for nine and a half years, and I'm also Microsoft MVP. Thanks. So rather experienced and you know all the struggles I have within my company. So <laughs> um, why, is, why we, do we want to talk about Windows Server 2025? So let me share my screen for that. And Windows Server 2025, or I would suggest Windows Server 25, is one of the pure hybrid Windows servers with all good features like hot patching um, and all the good things we have in HCI now. There are also features like AD less, but what I'm interested in and why it's on the channel is just as I said, there's 17 slides. I will share it. I will also share the session in the in the description. But it's made for easy hybrid. So it's Arc enabled server. Um, it will be purchased as a subscription model. So it can be either key or pay as you got subscription like you have with Azure Stack HCI. So you can run it with your Azure consumed revenue, which is rather interesting, plus the great features and it also supports M365 running on terminal services and most likely also will support a lot of appliance services, which we currently only have on HCI, so Kubernetes, for example. Um, you can see that and you can see everything within an amazing session from Jeff Woolsey and Eldon Christensen, which we, as I, said, will, uh, I will link. But there is yeah, Windows Server Summit. By the and way, there's the going on. Server. Yeah, you, you're speaking. You're speaking at the summit, I think. Also, yeah, I do have two sessions. One is on the Windows Server performance, and there is a, there are some NVMe um, improvements. So I was able to measure, and I am also presenting it. I was able to measure improvement for roughly from let's say 450,000 IOPS to 700 something IOPS. So it looks like that there are some improvements in NVMe driver that are able to utilize your CPU to 100% because yeah. I was able to stress the system with a VM fleets up to, let's say, 60%, 70%. And on the Windows Server 2025, it was 90, more than 90%. So yeah, that, that's, that's one improvement we had in HCI before because of the reduced operating system kernel. And now that also moved to uh, to the Windows Server, which is amazing. It's also a lot of Hyper-V improvements we only saw in, in HCI and all, now in the Windows Server. And that's why we thought, hey, it would be a good thing to let's talk about it. And the most important thing, especially when I have you on the call, is how can I test that? And I know that you already prepared an MS Lab for that. And that's that's one thing. Or the focus of our call today is really not about talking Windows Server and how amazing it is. We leave that with Jeff Fulsey. But how to test if it? I'm, uh, yeah, how to test it? How can I run it? How can I test it myself? And that get the first insights into what the new Windows Server 2025 in hybrid operation brings to the table. And yeah, Yaromi. As always, you have an amazing MS Lab uh, prepared for that already. I said you will also present it, I think, today. But let's also introduce that to the audience here. Perfect. So this is a new scenario that I wrote 
for Azure Stack Hands-On Labs that I do under Dell Geos. Dell Geos is Global Engineering Outreach Specialist. This is my group or our group. Um, um, so this is where I work in the Dell, in this group of global engineering technologists. So we do have a GitHub, and one GitHub uh, site is Azure Stack Hands-On Labs. In these Azure Stack Hands-On Labs, you can see that uh, one of the lab is testing Windows Server 2025 inside the preview. You can also you know, deploy Azure Stack ATI cluster 23H2 using cloud-based deployment or you know, play with 22H2, the traditional one, just to compare or you know, other labs. Or you can just go with this one and just test inside the preview. Uh, with inside the preview, there are multiple steps, multiple options. You know, just just use pure PowerShell or just go a bit step by step if you are new to PowerShell to study what you can do. And in this case, what you will do is first you will um, deploy two node uh, Windows Server 2025 using MS Lab. So what I will do first, I guess, is to a little bit show you what MS Lab is if you are first, uh, if you are new to MS Lab. So what what it needs to, what needs to be done and how it works, right? Yeah. Uh, Qu question. Yeah. My first question here is, for the for the MS Lab for the scenario, do I need to have expensive Dell hardware or anything like that, or can I use? Not at all. We will do everything on my laptop now. So, so you will see have that some spare memory. <laughs> and uh, no, spare not, not really, that. right? So the deployment output, as you can see, how much memory you need to have, it's just under five gigabytes for entire lab. So in this case, the def so this configuration that I'm using here uh, will be deploying, as you can see on the screenshot, domain controller, management machine two nodes for storage spaces direct, and then the gateway if you want to play with the gateway, right? You can kick off the gateway and then your lab will be, I don't know, four gigabytes, roughly four or five gigabytes, four and a half. Uh, but once you will finish configuring storage spaces direct, it will be like two gigabytes of memory being used. Remember, this is not Azure Stack ATI. For Azure Stack ATI, if you would do, for example, cloud deployment, it will need to deploy resource bridge. The resource bridge is the virtual machine. The virtual machine has to have some memory. So, and it will also fail if you do have less than X amount of memory. So in the deployment lab for 23H2, you need to have 20 gigs of the memory for each node. So if you want to go two node server, two node cluster, then, then it's 40 gig memory for just the virtual machines. You can You could go with one node uh, machine and then it would be you know, so that that would run on my system right now because I'm just using tw twenty gig for uh, twenty gigs for browser tabs. Uh -huh. Yeah, you have to close <laughs> so the browser. Will, so it will not be twenty gigs left. Um, so we had in our previous discussion, and especially Hyper-V on the Microsoft Business Machine is or uh, with our company profile, it's, it's horrible to configure. Um, so how do we start? So we so there are some to have, have Hyper-V running right? on 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 our local laptop whatsoever if you don't have it it will tell you right so the, the 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 lab itself the ms lab the way it works it's pretty simple right so so there are some prerequisites you have to do and this is basically you will learn how to work with ms lab how to prepare the files for the ms lab and then how how it actually works how to work with the lab config you know how to connect your lab into the internet and yada yada so these two guides are just introduction into how ms lab works and here there is also one prerequisite, one other prerequisite we will do together in this session and how to create Insider VHD. So imagine you download the ISO file from the, from the Insider Preview page, and you can also choose VHD if you want, right? But I do prefer ISO file because with the VHD, it's, what is the VHD? It's probably already some version, right? So is it server core or is it the GUI? Or is it a data center or is it standard edition? It, it was it was pre-installed. And even if you if you run through the out-of-box experience, there's some pre-configuration within the VHD, which maybe brings up some issues. Even okay. if it's just a generalized image. Yeah. So let's start okay, with the MS Lab itself, right? So let's go and type MS Lab in the okay. MS Lab just without anything into the browser. And the first thing you will find 
is the MS Lab GitHub project. The next step you have to do is scroll down and just download MS Lab scripts. That's it, right? So it will download a zip file with four scripts. So by the way, this will take slight time because this is a Windows function. It's not always running. So if someone is clicking it for, yeah, it's now generating the link and uh, for the second time, it will be faster because the, the VM is already running in, a, in Azure, so in a virtual function. So let me just copy this and then copy it into a folder. So I do have my folder called MS Lab and I do have Lab 1, Lab 2. So let me just delete these and then just paste it in here in an empty folder. And the next step you have to do is, guess what? Just right click on the PowerShell script and open with Oh, no, no, no. Show more options in this case, and then uh, run with PowerShell. And you will just follow it with the second script. And then if you would do the third script, it would just deploy the basic lab. But let me just um, move this UAC. I don't see my screen, I guess, because the UAC is kicked in. Uh, so it will start preparing some folders. Um, and these folders where the pattern disks will be created, so where um, the, the VHDs of the server will be created. Right? What I now will recommend you, and this is really important, is one, once this will finish, downloading all of the stuff, you will need to go to step two. But for the step two, do not provide Windows Server 2025 yet. Right? Because what then script number two will do, it will need to create a domain controller. And then this domain controller, once it's created, and then the uh, domain is configured and everything is done, then uh, what, we, what will happen is that this virtual machine is discarded, configuration is saved, and it's uh, just placed into the parent disks. So when you run deploy, it will be imported. But this importing doesn't work with Windows Server 2025. The importing itself works, but the machine will never boot. So it will be hanged in the boot sequence, right? At least the latest, um, the last time I tested, right? And I think it was in the known issues. So product management is aware of this issue. So if you will be creating parent disks with the step number two, provide Windows Server 2022 ISO file. What you can do, you can download either trial version. What I recommend is avoid trial version as possible and just try to get it from the MSDN subscription or uh, volume license subscription, just any other, and it's something else than, than, uh, than the, the, the trial, right? Because the trial has a time bomb in 180 days. It might be enough, yeah, but depends. And I also, I found that some of the ISO files do not have the, the Vim file, they do have ESD file, and if, you, if it has an ESD file, it doesn't work. It has to have it has to have Vim file, because what actually happens, the Vim file is transformed into the VHD. So then there would be a next step, and then uh, show more options again, and then uh, and show more options. You would go and run with PowerShell, and um, this. Par, this step would take around, I don't know, 40 minutes. Depends how how is your computer configured, right? So just to do with this telemetry. It will check if Hyper-V is installed. See, so it will do all of the pre-checks. It will tell you, hey, there's no Hyper-V installed, so I cannot continue. Or uh, you should have at least two gigs of memory available. So in my case, I do have 10 gigs memory, so all of this is good. So the next step, it, what will ask you is, it will ask you for the um, for the ISO file. So in my case, I can provide Windows Server 2022. And the next step, what will happen is it will create the, the parent images and everything, right? So I will skip this because we don't want to record waiting. Uh, so I'll just hit cancel. It will cancel this uh, uh, cancel this lab and I'll just simply delete this lab because I already have one created here All right so this is this is the result of the um, creation of the MS lab right you have a uh, three simple scripts uh, one is cleanup one is deploy and one is lab config 
So this is everything you need. And in the parent disks, you will have Windows Server 2022. You will not have Windows Server Insider. So what you will do is you will simply go right click on the create parent disk PS1. And again, you will just run it with a PowerShell. Oh, there's a run with PowerShell here. Um, okay. So what this will do, it will ask you for, it will automatically elevate and it will ask you for the ISO file. So in this case, I will provide Windows Server Insider Preview v next. And the next step, what will happen is it will ask you for the MSU packages. You can hit cancel. You don't need any MSU packages. And then it will ask you for the version, right? So if you would download the VHD already from the Insider Preview page, you could download the VHD, but you can select the version. That's one thing that you can select. So in case you want to have a desktop experience, so you can go with desktop experience, and then you will just specify the name. It will automatically generate the name from the version. So as you can see, this is the, the 260, uh, 63. So automatically you can just hit enter just to say, yep, this is fine. And then it will also ask you about the size of the VHD, right? Again, the one that you will download will already have some size. So you are locked into the size that someone already created for you. So this is why you want to create your own image. Does it make sense? It's okay, so, sense. so still, let's take a look in uh, Windows Server Insider. So if you search for a Windows Server Insider Preview, there's a first page is download Windows Server Insider Preview. So what I would recommend is to Okay, let's wait a little bit to select ISO file. Oh, there's a new ISO, right? So I didn't test this one. So maybe what I can do is test uh, this version uh, and maybe already the DC will be created. So you might not even have to create Windows yeah, Server 2022. Yeah, that one I think was published three, three days or four days ago. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a pretty new build. Uh, on the background, if you can uh, check the, the community, uh, uh, the release, if, the, if there is still an issue with this importing of the virtual machine, and if not, then I guess uh, what was, you could do. There's, a, uh, there's at least no note about that yet, but I can in our it. recording, we, we can test it. If not, we can still switch to the older version. Right, right, right. I mean, you can still use the older this new version right so you you can create and you can download the image you know download new version that's it right and then the next step what you want to do is modify the lab config and let's go back to the the guide um i do have here and this is your lab config right so let me just copy everything from here and just paste it into the lab config that i do have here so you can rewrite it completely uh, let me just rewrite it and let's 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 see what's here right so there are some allowed vlans so what i do like is that with network atc by default if you do not modify network atc you will configure 711 712 730 714 um, uh, uh, vlans right for depending how many how many nicks you have you can also modify how many NICs you want to have. It's in the parameter. So if you would go and uh, open the default lab config, it will give you an examples. So you can add here, uh, I don't know what's the variable here, but you can add more NICs, right? And then you can observe that when you will create network intent, it will create more VNICs and each VNIC will be in different VLAN. So for example, if you have four physical NICs, it will then create four VNIC. And then for each VNIC, it will do um, if it will do different VLAN. Or you can just play with you know dedicated networks. So you can create one intent from two networks and then another intent from another two network cards. So it also works. So in this case we do have two S2D nodes. One to two with Windows Server Insider 2063. So in the in the in the in a lab guide, you have to note that there is a that there is a version, right? Um, yeah. So let me just close this and save it, and then simply what I will do, I will just right click on the deploy. I'll run the run the PowerShell here.
just to basic. So this error is there because it's not the newest version of the MS lab. It was already fixed. Um, so you will not see any errors with the telemetry anymore. So what will happen now, it will import the domain controller. It will create a checkpoint on the domain controller so you can then easily clean up the cloud, the, 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 you can easily clean up the lab just by basically reverting the, the snapshot to the, to the default and then remove everything. So next time you will deploy the lab again, you will have a clean slate, you will have a clean DC, right? And the, what other virtual machines will be created, there will be also these two storage spaces direct nodes. And then the next step, we'll, 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 we will have a management machine with Windows Server Insider with the GUI. Right. So this is what we specified in the lab config. If we will open it again, we will see that there is a, the two S2D nodes, or there is a one commented line if you would like to have S2D nodes with nested virtualization enabled, and that where you can specify how many memory, how much memory you want to have in each machine. So in this case, eight gigabytes, but you can increase if you want to test some nested virtualization stuff. And then one management machine, and as you can see, there's Windows Server Insider GUI version, right? Because if it's the core, um, it's Windows Server Insider core. And this is automatically generated name um, with a create parent disk uh, script. So these red errors are um, expected because, as you can see, the DC is booting, but it's the power with PowerShell Direct, it's testing if the uh, Active Directory is running inside a virtual machine, so it can continue with creating virtual machines. And when the virtual machines are created, they are domain joined, right? So, um, so um, it needs to connect to the Active Directory on the DC to create a machine, right? To create an object in Active Directory, because when the machine is created, the the the, the blob is inserted into the answer file. The blob contains domain join information, uh, um, and not username and password, but it also it's it's already the um, username and password for the for the machine. <clears throat> is it is it possible to, for example, I have now a running MS lab for HCI just to add the Windows Server to to that sure. specific lab? You will just modify you will just modify your lab config, add more lines of the code, and then run deploy again. It will find that these machines already exist, so it will skip it, and then it will create the machines that you specified. So not a problem at all. You can expand your existing MS lab just by running deploy again. Okay. So what you can see here, it's configuring NAT. So in my machine, because I installed uh, Hyper-V, uh, it creates a default switch, right? So if you go into the virtual switch manager here, you will see that there is a default switch created. Mm -hmm. So there's some embedded NAT in the Hyper-V. Um, there is PowerShell module for this, so you can even install this, this on the on the server. I would have to dig it, but I can provide you a script if you want. Um, or if anyone wants, just ask in the comments, right? And I'll send it to you. So basically what you can do is you can even do this in, uh, in the Windows server, so you don't have to figure out uh, IP addresses for your virtual machines. For example, if your lab is somewhere where the DHCP is not enabled um, and you want to have internet connectivity, as you can see, it will create some dummy network and create a NAT from your internet connectivity to your lab. So the domain controller is connected to the internet using the default switch, and then there is a um, MS lab subnet. By default, it's this one, you can modify it. In the, in the lab config, basically provide what you want to have a, as a subnet. And this is your management machine. Right. There's a trunk now. So this is something new that I added that there is also a trunk. So um, you can have multiple VLANs. And I will soon have a new lab that will show you how to create more multiple subnets. So, because with Azure Stack HCI, um, there are logical networks, and you can create more logical networks. So, 
um, this is something that I want to publish today or tomorrow. So when this recording will be out, hopefully there will be new lab in Dell Geos GitHub. So as you can see, there, there are virtual machines already being created. Uh, so it's really, really fast, right? And if you can, if you if you check the machine configurations, you will see that the machine has multiple network adapters and multiple disks. Right. So you're, you're already preparing the minimum requirements for um, basically storage for spaces storage direct. spaces direct. Yeah, you can have a less disk in the storage spaces direct, but four is recommended. So yeah, yeah I'm, I'm creating four disks and then two uh, two NICs. And as you can see, the MS lab, what it can do is it can create a trunk so you can test all of this uh, VLANs. Right. Yeah. And the management machine is being created. Uh, and the last thing that will happen is it will ask you, do you want to start the lab? And you will just say yes, and then that's it, right? And then if you want to configure, um, then, then if you want to configure storage spaces direct on your cluster, there are two ways to do it. Either you will just follow the step-by-step -step document in here, um, to log in into your management machine, open PowerShell ISC, and then just use this script in the PowerShell ISC and then just, just run the regions. Or you can just go step by step. So I I created some step by step with the comments um, where you will just open the, in, uh, open the PowerShell and basically do step by step. So you can copy the code to install the features. And this is just explaining that the following code will install all possible remote server administration tools that you might need to manage your environment, right? So all of these RSAT clustering or BitLocker or DHCP, DNS tools. And then the next step, install features on the server. So you can just copy it, paste it, and go step by step. Which is, you'll find this is boring. So the next step you will do, and I hope everyone will do, is just simply download the script and then paste it into the, uh, paste it into the uh, PowerShell, right? Or oh, there's a copy. There's a copy. Um, um, so you can just copy what, what's in here and just simply paste it into the PowerShell. So let's see. So this this was already provisioned. I can start start all of the machines in Hyper-V. See, it's now starting. And here you have your Windows Server 2025. You can play with one with GUI and then two with uh, two with um, uh, server core, so you can start, and you you can even start deploying uh, Azure Stack ETI, oh, storage space direct cluster on Windows Server 2025 with this script. And I I prefer scripting, and hopefully you will prefer scripting too because it's so much easier. I don't like this it, as it, um scripting. I mean, it's more or less like a documentation in a PowerShell, right? It's, yeah, not, it's, like it's a... not only documentation, so it's also what Bernhard and and the team, uh, what we use is really, we need to spin up labs pretty fast or you need to tear them down pretty um, mm -hmm. quite often due to even within the Microsoft, we have only a limited amount of resources. So that's that's why we also scripted, or especially Bernhard and, and myself, we're using MS Lab a lot. So that we can just tear down our environment. If we need it, we can spin it up within a half uh, half a day or something like that. So um, it's it's pretty useful if you if you really need to have something available and you cannot run it twenty four seven. Yeah, so especially if you want to test something, some specific feature, right? So for example, if you want to see or test domainless clusters, this is something that I would love to do next. You can um, in the MS lab configure that these machines should not be domain joined. So you can yeah. just skip domain joining, but you will already have a DHCP. You already have a name of these machines. So with the NetBIOS, you should be able to um, uh, find the machine. So you should be able to ping it, and with uh, uh, with configuring the trusted host, you should be able to invoke commands to the machine, right? So the next step I want to try is to set up the the, the cluster domainless. But I think it doesn't make sense on a Windows Server 2025. Yeah, the, 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 or let's say we're we asking quite a while for uh, address HCI AD less because those you normally run at the edge 
where you don't have a domain control. So there it would oh, make true. more sense that's to true. work with that's than true. in a Windows Server, which we which we traditionally find in a in a data center. Um, but if you, for example, run Hyper-V clusters at the edge, or if you run it uh, in an in an environment where you don't have an Active Directory, basically. So we have a lot of customers, or we know a lot of people who run on Entra ID exclusively now. That's true. And and they and those people will most likely connect their Windows Server to Entra ID, but need to run a cluster. So they will no longer um, you uh, need to deploy um, an Active Directory only to run the cluster in their in their small office or so. So it, 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 there are niche scenarios where it may, maybe makes sense, especially when you run 100% cloud identity, um, or something different like like a Google directory service or LDAP or whatsoever. There it, it makes sense, but for it's most more tradition... tricky to manage, right? Because yeah. um, I'm not sure if the Hyper-V manager works or failover cluster manager works. It will work. No. It, 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 yeah, so it will work, but with a local identity, I think. I didn't test it. Um, we ha we have it, to do that, right? So the yeah. next next thing we should do is probably I'll write some scenario on domainless uh, yep. uh, cluster. It would be fun, I guess. Um, and I think it would be highly asked by the community. So leave us comments. We are happy to do. Uh, the and only thing you have to do is to more or less invoke a command to, to machine and Based by specifying credentials, so invoke command credentials as a parameter, and you need to configure trusted host to be able to send your credentials to the host. You need yep. to create, you need to configure local trusted host. Yep. So as, as you can see, what I did is I just simply copied the script, and now these, these are your variables, like what is, what should be the cluster name, cluster updating role, IP if you want to have a cluster IP. Um, uh, if you want to deploy Dell updates, if you are doing this on a physical server, if this is on a physical environment, you can delete the pool, right? If there was something on the pool. So yeah, and then the next step, what you can do, and I prefer to do it with the PowerShell. So just copy it and then paste it into the PowerShell. The reason is you can see it line by line. If I would simply run it here, um, you know, if I'll run update all servers from here, it's not going line by line. Right, so it's just running the entire region, and you don't know what's happening. Right, if you yeah. copy it, and then uh, copy it and paste it into the PowerShell here, it will go line by line, and you will see what's kind of happening. Yeah. Uh, so it looks like yeah, something doesn't work. Uh, oh, service, so yeah. Looks like let's I mean what I first what I also do as a first thing is that I simply add service to management just to make sure that these servers are connected and responding, right? Uh, if the Kerberos authentication works, if it's correctly deployed, if it's already started, right? Yeah. So but yeah, you can follow the guide just by running, you know, just by running the script like I already did. Ah, Windows PowerShell. So this is the easiest test that you know, kind of works. So we have, you, you are connected to the machine. So you can now start playing with uh, what it's. We just copy it again, and then just, maybe I need to copy this, and then just paste it like this. Variables, and then update machines. It's it's, this is interesting, right? Because I'm using this virtual account to kick off the portion of the script, uh, because this script is actually from the sconfig, right? So to create a session, to create this downloader installer, and then install whatever you will search for or find uh, with this query, right? But it doesn't work if you just invoke it, right? Even if you do uh, credit SSP, it doesn't work. For some reason, it works only if you run it under the local system. And to run it under the local system, what I do, I'm, I'm creating, which is pretty interesting. Um, I'm creating um, uh, with how's it called, PowerShell uh, GIA. 
basically with the GIA, I'm creating a virtual account. And then if you run it under the, this virtual account, it actually runs under the local system. Yeah. So you create a virtual account and invoke it. So you basically go step by step like this and that's it. And you will copy next portion of the code, copy, paste, copy, paste, and then in the end you have a failover cluster. Yeah, and that, uh, that brings us, I think, to the end of our video for today. So how yep. can you test Windows Server 2025? I would uh, recommend also your session uh, captures from the Windows Server Summit. So hopefully I can get them early enough for the for the capture. If not, I will add it later. So as soon as there, you will find it. And yeah, give MSLab a try. Leave us a comment and also leave um, comments on the or if you find something in the MSLab repo uh, from from Yaromir, just make a pull request if you if you need to. Yeah, but also what I would love to hear is if you prefer uh, this step by step guides, which is, you know, really time consuming, right? Because I really wanted to show you how it's so much easier just to, you know, follow the PowerShell, right? Yeah. Or if you want to have everything like a described to, you know, this is how you would do it. I think for, for the learning purposes, so if you ask me, I prefer your step by step guides because it explains to me what, what it does. Mm -hmm. I'm not that I just get lost in PowerShell pretty quickly because I'm not doing it on a daily basis. So if you would ask Bernhard, he would most likely have a, a different opinion about that. But I really like to have these step by steps for me as a dumb UI right. person. Um, that really helps it my, uh, and it really gives some more clearance to to what MSLab does in this in the specific uh, areas. So. I would keep it personally, but yeah, let's let's ask the audience for it. Yeah, definitely. What you can do is you can just expand the regions, just see what's happening, and just go step by step like this, right? Because it will just this is just configure active memory dump. This, if you will read this, this is like set item property in the path, okay, HKLN, it's registry, and then create the crash dump enabled with value one. So it's self documenting. <laughs> so see so super easy and then you get bored and you just start pasting a code and then when i write a new one or copy my or, or create new scenario i more or less i'm copying code from what i already created right and the same way you should do your own documentation if you if you do something in your company if you do something if you do um reconfigure something instead of doing screenshots just use PowerShell because you can search in the full text, right? So what I usually do, I open my repository and just, you know, control F and search for how to, I don't know, do something. So just by keywords and I, then you just walk through the code and I, uh, and I just copy already my code for the new scenarios. Yeah. Great. So then let's call it a day Aramis. So I think you can stop sharing now so that and for everyone else, so at first, Jeremy, thank you again for, for presenting MS Lab and the capabilities. We will do the next one uh, as soon as you're ready with the AD less clustering with Windows Server. I think Jeff will also enjoy that. I will speak to Jeff most likely during April, so there will be some cool video with Jeff. We'll see about Windows Server 2025 coming up. And yeah, thank you again. And yeah, good luck with your session today. For everyone else, subscribe, have fun, and leave us some comments. Bye. Bye.